Good evening and welcome to our second uh, GCSE history um, live stream of 2022. Um, I'm joined as ever by Rocky. Hi, Rocky. Hi, Duncan. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Thanks. You? Yeah, very well. Thanks. Not bad. Great stuff. And we've got uh, another session on early Elizabethan England this evening. And we're looking at um, the religious settlement. Yeah. So... Um, Shall we? So, just a quick little bit of housekeeping before we get going. Just mention if you're watching live, you can join in with all the activities in the chat window. Um, and we'll explain how to do that as we go. If you're watching on catch up, and we know lots of you do each week, um, you can't join in with the live chat, but you can, you know, potentially pause the video and uh, have a little bit longer on some of the questions if you uh, feel the need to do so. Okay, shall we? Um, get straight to the first activity which i think is with yeah. you rocky okay here we go okay right evening everyone hope you're well so this basically sort of links to a, a four marker described two features but we're asking for three features of elizabeth uh, elizabeth's religious settlement now as i say with the gcse question or on the gcse paper the question will actually be described two features but I personally think that there are three features that you could potentially identify. So really, it gives you a little bit of flexibility with this answer. But of course, if you actually get this question in a paper, do not write three features. Just stick to the two. OK, best of luck. Feel free to type a feature in the chat. don't have to write out a full answer. Okay. 
Okay. Let's have a look. Just, oh, I've just got uh, an answer here from Kemi about public mass being banned. Brilliant. And Catholics practice their religion in pro private. Ah, that's interesting. Um, and then anonymous, we've got act of supremacy, made Elizabeth supreme governor of the church or clergy. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a very developed one. Nice. Okay. Should we have a look at, little look at the answers? And I'll come back to these um, answers in the chat here. Good. So these are the three that we've got. Um, as you can see, just like we said last week, if you if you didn't attend last week, obviously in red, we have um, the feature. And then in black, we have the, the developed point next uh, attached to the feature so that it'd allow you to get two marks. So to make it really simple, I've said one feature was the act of supremacy, and this makes Elizabeth the supreme governor of uh, the Church of England. A second feature, 1559 Act of Uniformity, Clues in the word, if any, everything's uniform, it's kept the same. So this focuses on the fact that church appearance and services had to be the same across the country. And then a third feature to give you a bit of flexibility were the royal injunctions. These were royal instructions that provided further details. Now, within that, I'm just looking at some of these answers. So Rachel said about Bibles being in English. Fantastic. That could be seen as a feature of the royal settlement because that ties in with uniformity and injunctions we've got kemi about public public mass being banned i like that that's very good because obviously the uh, catholics heavily influenced by public mass uh, public mass one answer that kemi's given is about catholics practicing their religion in private i wouldn't say that that's a feature of elizabeth's religious settlement although i'd say that's a reaction to it um and then fourthly from anonymous that this answer is superb about the, the role of the act of supremacy, supremacy and with the supporting feature, uh, sorry, the supporting detail regarding all clergy and royal officials having to swear an oath of allegiance. Wow. Good. Very good start. But as I say, feature, then supporting detail. Great start. Well done, you three. Thanks for getting involved. OK, next, tying in with this, which again, a lot of this sort of ties in with the, the religious settlement as well. You've got 16 pieces of information here. And we need you to go through and find out and decide where is Elizabeth reinforcing Protestantism within maybe her royal injunctions or her decisions? And where is she actually showing compromise with Catholicism? So what you have, um, we'll give you a bit of time to go through. And then in the chat window, you don't have to write these out in full, but you could say, for instance, A1, where it looks at two different texts of the communion service. Now, that is... I don't mind giving you this answer as an example. That's a compromise with Catholicism because obviously Protestants and Catholics have different beliefs about transubstantiation and, and the, the, the bread and uh, blood during church services being a, a, a physical manifestation of Jesus or a representation or, you know, a symbolic representation of him. You put A1 equals compromise. So that is all you have to do. So we'll give you plenty of time, go through, use the grid references and then say, Protestant or Catholic or Protestant and compromise. Hope that makes sense. So have a little look, see what you think. I do appreciate the uh, the text might be a little bit small if you're looking at it on a, a phone or something. So I hope I hope you can uh, try to get it as big as we can on the screen. But um, I hope hope you can read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If not, apologies in advance. There's there's some that don't have too too much text. So hopefully. If there's any that you're unsure of, you could always put in the chat the grid reference, if you like, and say, I don't know, C2, not sure, and then I'm happy to explain. But yeah, obviously you've got time here. Okay, a little bit longer. Remember as well, you know, all these resources are downloadable, so you could always look at this um, in future in terms of a revision. Uh, 
Okay. Should we have a little look? There you go. So we tried to make it even. So sort of eight on one, eight on the other. Now, the yellow obviously shows where Elizabeth is trying to reinforce Protestant Protestantism and, and drive forward her religious changes. And you'll see, if you look at A3 with the role of um, published sermons, she's using this as a form of propaganda to stress the, the importance of supremacy and uniformity. Likewise, with C4, this is essentially censorship, isn't it? restricting people from preaching unless they get a permit from the government and, and essentially preach what Elizabeth wants. Um, you'll see in white here with the compromises, a lot of this tends to be surrounding decoration because obviously the, the Catholics um, are big on decoration. Um, their churches are very decorative, meant to be showing sort of the glory of God, whereas with Protestantism, everything's scaled back because it's meant to be about that personal relationship with God. The key one to remember before we move on to the next task, though, I think A1 is absolutely crucial because transubstantiation and the issue of it is so vital to Catholics where they believe, you know, the bread and wine literally turns into and, you know, miraculously turns into the, the body and blood of Christ. That's one where Elizabeth realises, based on last week, you know, you know, threats to her throne and there's questions on her legitimacy, with her legitimacy, sorry, and she knows that she's unpopular with Catholics. She really wants to show compromise here. Um, so this is why, particularly with that one, she uses two different texts, where a lot of the other compromise tends to be more about sort of how the church looks to an extent. Okay, should we, should we move on? Yep. Yep. If you're watching that on catch up, obviously you can pause it and spend a bit longer reading them, etc. If you want to try and get all the make maybe take some notes, or whatever. Okay. We've got a conveyor belt quiz next, so you're going to have a minute to answer some questions. Six questions are going to pass by on the conveyor belt. They don't stay on for very long, so read them as they come. And then if you could try and answer them. So just type them into the chat window, your answers, um, and then we'll go through them all. But to begin with, they're just going to come past. I'm not going to stop mid mid quiz. So good luck. See how you do. Okay, well done. Some answers coming through in the chat window there. Um, I think for the most part, it will be clear which ones they were in answer to as we go through the answers. If I if I misinterpret any of your um, any of your answers, do put, uh, do put me right in the chat window. Okay, but if we have a look through the answers, um, first one was out of ten thousand parish priests, how many refused? to swear the uh, allegiance to Elizabeth and it was uh, 2000 I think we had a few um, a few answers there I think we had an 8000 and a 900 uh, 2000 there um, it's quite a lot it's quite a lot um, let's have a look at the next one out of 27 
English bishops, how many refused to swear allegiance to Elizabeth? That was 26. So well done, Rachel. I think she got that one. Uh, very good. In the first visitation to ensure the settlement was being enforced, how many clergy were replaced? That was 400. I don't know if anyone suggested an answer for that one. Um, but uh, I don't know, Rocky. I assume that's because when people um, went, you know, when they came to see it, there were these were people who weren't conforming as they were meant to be doing. Absolutely. There's, um, you. I mean, trying to play the exam game and second guess questions. If you could sort of imagine a twelve mark or explain why the religious settlement was difficult to enforce or something like that. I mean, you know, you've got a good statistic about two thousand priests refusing to swear the oath of allegiance. And then, yeah, the idea that in these churches across the country, they're not preaching um, or they're not following rather the act of supremacy or the act of uniformity. Um, so this is why with these visitations, Elizabeth is quick to try and replace who she can, when she can to enforce this uh, yeah. uh, supremacy and uniformity. It's quite interesting to see um, particularly the, how many of the bishops refused so i mean a lot of you know there were a lot of priests but it was most did most did sort of uh, sign but the all you know almost all the bishops refused is that that's yeah quite... that's it at, at the top at the top at the very top now th this is quite interesting as well because what elizabeth does she tries to keep that hierarchical structure which you tend to mm. associate with catholicism but she wants to keep that hierarchical structure to try and enforce her will um but then obviously she, she meets problems at the top end because they don't want to, um, you know, conform. Yeah. And then we've got the Pope um, instructing English Catholics not to attend church services in 1566. That links to an answer someone gave early on, didn't they, about um, Catholics worshipping in, in uh, not, you know, in private or whatever, rather than going to, going to church. Yeah, services. that's it. So, yeah, the, the, the recusancy, mm. um, if, if you're a recusant, yeah, you, 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 um, worship in private essentially and don't turn up but this is really in, in important this this 1566 is a turning point because it's the first time we see the Pope interfere and meddle in English uh, religious affairs um, which which puts sort of Elizabeth on the back foot and then um, the Puritans they were a problem for um, this because they went on the rampage, destroying statues of saints. Um, obviously, you know, the, part of the problem with compromise is that you sometimes end up not pleasing, not pleasing anyone. You know, um, yeah. neither, neither side of a compromise sometimes can be pleased. So, um, you know, Catholics, you know, would, wouldn't want to necessarily compromise, um, you know, particularly on things like, um, transubstantiation and the Pope. Um, but obviously, uh, Puritans and some, the more extreme Protestants wouldn't want any of these points of compromise with Catholicism either. The challenge to their beliefs. Um, so that's quite quite interesting. And I, I, yeah, without sort of um, getting in advance of one of your later questions, I was quite interested to see that uh, you know sometimes the problem was people were being too pro yeah that the the, the priests that and services that people were visiting were being too protestant rather than being too catholic which you know in your mind yeah. you sort of think it's it's going to be all that they were you know it was too much incense and and and, and altars and vestments but rather than you know not enough <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of it. Exactly. um and then i think someone correctly rachel said northern uh regions yeah. were the hardest to enforce the settlement yeah north yeah. northwest Can yeah too. Yeah. Oh, yes. She as well. Yeah. Well done. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, as opposed to sort of the south and the southeast where you know, Protestantism was was much stronger. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we'll look at this in, in subsequent um, sessions. But one of the reasons Protestantism is sort of stronger in the southeast is because of its proximity to continental Europe and and the Netherlands in particular is a hotbed of Protestantism and that's England's major trading partner at that point. Um, so that's why the North further away from sort of the continent, which is sort of a more exposed to these Protestant ideas is uh, more heavily Catholic. Your neck of the woods, Duncan. Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I, I was, I was, I nearly went on a sort of a 
decided to bore everyone with uh, my family history of recusancy. <laughs> but I, I was doing a bit of a <laughs> genealogy, but I thought, yeah, I don't want to go into too much about that. But um, anyway, <laughs> but it was well, it is quite interesting though. Um, some of the some of the characters. But anyway, um, if I pass back to you for stepping stones. Yeah. So th- this one, what we'll do is with stepping stones. Um, we, there's, we've got two basically. One stepping stones focuses on the the crucifix controversy, and the second um, stepping stone focuses on the vestments controversy. So this looks at, again how are things difficult for Elizabeth to enforce? Why are they difficult to enforce? So what we'll do, we give the first and fourth answer, so the beginning and end of this situation. And you need to try and work out what the next stages are. So if we take stage one, crucifixes were seen as a form of idol worship. So clearly that's what why the Protestants generally did not like crucifixes. And then if we go right to the end, Elizabeth kept her crucifix in the royal chapel, but back down from the Protestant clergy's demands and crucifixes were ultimately removed. So we have the beginning and end of this story. Depending on the extent of your revision, you need to try and try and put it in a chat box where possible. What are the stages in between? So what are the stepping stones to get from point one to point four? So this is this is a new one. You you created this, Duncan, didn't you? This new task. I like this. I I won't go as far as say I created it. I I may oh, I may I may I may have had some uh, some input, but no, I, 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 but. It's not. It's not. It's not my work, but it's a. It is a good. Oh, task. It is a good activity. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's a good test of revision. This one. So you might want to think then to get from stage one to stage four. What's happening? What is Elizabeth doing? What are priests doing? How does this sort of rejection of crucifixes and and the arguably the sort of the infighting between Elizabeth and the priests? How does this manifest itself? This is a tough one. It's useful, isn't it? Because sometimes a student might just write what's on the what we've got there, just the crucifix seems to you know, just what's there and that would be their answer. But by adding those stages it becomes a you know, fuller answer, a more analytical answer, less descriptive. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Rachel's put something in there for the next possible as a possible Oh yeah, and, and I think she might have put both or suggesting things for both next steps. Nice. Yeah. So Elizabeth wants to keep the crucifixes. The Puritans said no. That's good. Now, you might want to think then, Rachel, with step three, what would happen between that? Lovely. So you've, you've nailed step two. So what with step three, how does this sort of conflict and tension further develop? And we know step four, Elizabeth does back down. So why, perhaps? Could this be the case? Kemi, this enraged Puritans, therefore Elizabeth. Okay, brilliant. You're on the you are on the right lines. That's very good. So enrages Puritans and therefore Elizabeth, being a Protestant herself, wanted to keep them pleased. That's very good. There's another reason why Elizabeth almost feels forced to bend to the the the, the Puritans and the priests. Um will at this point and it's to do with timing shall we have a look shall we have a look yeah let's go right brilliant so the key issue here then as well is about oh paper ball unlucky no good good guess the paper ball (laughs) <laughs> sorry i'll keep getting interrupted by these comments but these comments are so good they threaten to leave or something basically you're right rachel yeah but the the, the papal ball that comes later kemi regarding uh the pope excommunicating elizabeth in 1570 so yeah essentially what happens is the protestant clergy threaten to resign if crucifix aren't removed and because this is early relatively early into the settlement there's not enough trained protestant clergy to replace the ones that are dissenting so elizabeth essentially steps back and allows those protestant clergy to get their way have the crucifixes removed because she can't simply replace them um 
But as we see, she likes crucifixes. She likes those bits of decoration, hence the compromises in the first place. And she keeps her own crucifix in the royal chapel. That was a that was a sterling effort, you two. Well done. Next one, then. Vestments controversy. Very, well, I say very similar. Similar in the fact that it's controversial and similar in the fact that there's, you know, Protestant members of the clergy who are resistant to these changes. So the vestments, they're special clothes worn by Catholic clergy, but Elizabeth wants to maintain them, but she simplifies them slightly. She wants to scale them back. OK, by the end of this event, 110 clergy were invited to attend. Attend what? 37 refused and they lost their posts. So this is a little bit later on in the time. The rest agreed to follow the rules and wear the vestments as instructed. So step two and step three, you might want to think about who is attending what? Why? What is this attendance about? So as Duncan said, this helps make your answers a lot more analytical because you're clearly not only describing changes, but you're now starting to explain those changes. So what do you think the clergy attended? Who do you think led that attendance? What what was it about? Should we look at the next step and see yeah. if that helps with the third? Might one? Do. This is this is a tricky one. It is one of those to be honest. You either you've either revised it or you don't. Okay. So 1565 visitation revealed the vestments prescribed in the settlement were not being worn. So this is a therefore a, a call to action. So the simpler vestments, oh, I'm going to come to that comment in a minute. So the simpler vestments are not being worn. And we've just seen Rachel. The Archbishop supported Elizabeth. Fantastic. Now, this ties in with Stepping Stone 3. Who was the Archbishop and what do you think the Archbishop was doing to support Elizabeth? Ah, uh, nailed it. Well done. Held an exhibition showing off the vestments. Excellent. Great. So a year later, Matthew Parker holds this exhibition. And you'll see these are some of the senior clergy invited. Shows off the vestments. The fact it's endorsed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the most senior religious position in the country, um, is very, very important. And you'll see here, even though 37 refuse, ultimately two thirds agree to wear the vestments and then they go on to try and influence other, you know, local parish priests and things like that. Um, excellent effort. It's tough, stepping stones. Yeah, that it's a good activity, isn't it, to get um, get the students thinking and uh, um, and yeah, making those links, explaining the processes, which you know definitely lifts the answers. We've got a quiz now, which is going to look back over what we've talked about, really, a sort of summary type quiz. You've got um, three questions um, that are ranked mild, spicy, or hot. Um, and you can choose um, which, well, you can answer all three questions or, you know, but basically you can score yourself if you get the hot question right, you get three points. Um, so I, I would just quickly say, sorry, the, the, the hot one, number three, that ties in with last week's as well. That's uh, why it's quite tricky. Yeah. So here we go. So the mild one, what was the religious settlement? So that's looking back at what we've been talking about today. Spicy, the spicy one, list examples of why it was difficult to enforce the settlement. And then we've got the hot one, why was the settlement a compromise? Why did they choose to compromise? So I think we, we, you know, we have touched on this today, so I'm expecting some excellent answers. You have got, I think it's 30 seconds to get your answers in. It might be 60, let's see. I think it's 30. Um, let's see how you do. Good luck. <laughs> Oh, this is a different tune. Oh, I feel like I'm in the happy end up. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, it's 60 seconds. We got a bit longer. Some really good answers coming through. I've been uh, throwing shapes in the uh, GCU <laughs> studio here. I was doing a big fish, little fish, cardboard box, etc. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so some good uh, answers coming in in the chat window. I've seen from Anonymous. I think we might have more than one Anonymous. I don't know if it's... Um, but we've got uh, number one, question one, what was the religious settlement? It was an attempt by Elizabeth I to unite the country after the changes in religion under Henry VIII, Edward VI and Mary I. Yep, that's definitely a big part of what it was. And examples of why it was difficult to enforce, um, couldn't end religious disputes, most of the population gradually conformed, there was a minority remaining loyal to Catholicism and of course also we had the issue with Puritanism as well that was mentioned um, we haven't had a suggestion for the hot answer so no one's uh, so you know anonymous is getting some scoring some points there but no one's got the uh, top score um, unless it appears while I'm talking um, why was there a compromise why did they go for a compromise let's have a look at um, the answers we've got here so the religious settlements specifically were the Act of Supremacy, the Act of Uniformity and the Royal Injunctions. Um, when England officially became a Protestant country, Elizabeth came um, head of the Church of England. Um, some of the reasons, some examples of why it was difficult to enforce a settlement. We had the crucifix controversy, investment controversy, which we just looked at in the Stepping Stones activities. We've got the geographical issues about the differences between uh the north and the south and the different religious beliefs in the different areas we've got the pope's instruction for catholics to stay at home we've got puritanism we've got catholic clergy not wanting to conform and then why was it uh oh gosh sorry i've gone gone too far um why was it a compromise we had all the stuff last week didn't we about um the challenges that that um that faced elizabeth on her accession to the throne and the problems about uh her legitimacy um lack of an heir the um catholic support for um, mary queen of scots all of that um and so elizabeth was very much aware of questions all these questions and she had a in many ways a precarious position um and so she wanted to have this more compromising position that where she felt she would be more secure than perhaps the more conflict oriented approaches that uh, that, that that had um, gone before um and you mentioned mary the first counter reformation there so that's um you know the kind of i suppose bringing back of catholicism wasn't it after um after henry the eighth and the yeah. yeah is that yeah yeah, yeah that's it basically and and, and obviously by having the counter reformation under mary the first obviously catholicism itself um becomes re-emphasized within england and then you know the pope regains authority and for elizabeth mm -hmm. to switch back she's conscious of this you know rising catholic sentiment again and the fact that the english people were in a bit of limbo um so yeah, that that ties in. But some yeah. good answers there from anonymous, but especially the point about recusancy. Yeah, good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, well done. Um, we've got a final activity, um, which is a bit of fun, really. It's it's probably my favourite activity. I just realised it's got the wrong colours on it. That's a bad thing. Sorry, I do apologise about the wrong colours. Um, to give you an example of how it works, if you've ever seen um Richard Osman's House of Games which is a sort of fun tea time television quiz. The last round is always something called Answer Smash, where there's a picture and a clue and you have to sort of smash the two together. And the end of the first word becomes the start of the second word. So you've got the southernmost continent in the world, home to the South Pole, is Antarctica. Um, you've got an elephant, and so you smash them both together, you've got Elif Antarctica. That's how it works. But the clues on the ones that are coming are going to be to do with 
Elizabeth's religious settlement. We're not just uh, asking any old thing. Um, so we've got a photograph of someone. And we've got Elizabeth became the head of this. So do you recognise who that is? Some people think she might be Mushroom in The Masked Singer. I, I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> but uh, she's, you know, she, she is famous beyond that, I have to point out. Um, can, <laughs> can anyone uh, work out? I mean, I suppose the perhaps the easier, in this occasion, it might be easier to answer the history question than the uh, who's the photograph of question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What did Elizabeth become the head of as a result of the uh, religious settlement? There is always the possibility that this activity stumps everyone. It's normally something that people sort of get the hang of after a time, but possibly the first time we try it, it falls a little bit flat. Um, it is... Charlotte Church of England. So Elizabeth became the head of the Church of England. The photograph is of Charlotte Church. So we smash them together to make Charlotte Church of England. Okay. Um, let's see how you do with the next one. Um, again, maybe think about the uh, the uh, history question. Recognising the first one. Hey, you might do because you might have been on a, on a trip or something. Um, so the upper chamber of parliament, which contains bishops, um, it still is that. So it was then, it still is now, it still exists. So in, the, in many ways, parliament has changed beyond, you know, beyond recognition from um, the Elizabethan period. But the the thing that's known as the upper upper chamber is still this. And it still does have bishops in it, I believe. And there's some talk about what might happen um when we have the next, when when we get, end up with King Charles, because I don't know whether there's some talk about whether um, what might happen, because he wants to become defender of faith rather than the faith. That's an interesting <laughs> bit of politics for you. What what might happen at that point? Would you still have bishops in this body? So again, maybe just answer the the proper history question if you don't want to. <laughs> Try and guess what the pictures of. Well, it is the House of Lords, the upper house, um, where the bishops sit, and the pictures of Chatsworth House. You might have been, you know, it's, quite, it's a very, very impressive building in Derbyshire. If you haven't, so Chatsworth House of Lords. The last one, if you didn't get those two, this one's absolutely impossible. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> this was the hard one out of the three. Um, Although I, you might well get the history question, or the, and you know, for some of you it might be a theological question. Um, so the process where the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, Rocky referred to it earlier. Um, so this is something that our Roman Catholics strongly believe, um, that when they eat the uh, bread and um, the bread and drink the wine in the Eucharist during Mass that something has happened there's been a sort of mir miracle a, a spiritual change what do they call that and then if you know what they call that brand of batteries <laughs> that may or may <laughs> not help that may or may not help at the uh, <laughs> at the start oh well um anonymous has got the right answer for the process and so is Rachel. It is transubstantiation. The battery is Duracell Extra, so it's a Duracell X. Sorry, Duracell Ultra. So it's Duracell Ultra Ultra transubstantiation. <laughs> that one does get quite difficult. But well, and Darcy recognised it was Duracell, but it was specifically Duracell Ultra with its hundred percent more power, or up to hundred percent more power. That could just be one percent, couldn't it? Um, <laughs> Duracell Ultra transubstantiation. But well done with the important bit, which was getting substantiation. We have got lots of resources on uh, the TTG website, which can help you with your revision. If you have one of the, a smart device, you can scan that QR code um, and it'll take you to lots of um, study notes and activities. And we do have um, an exam buster sort of revision guide written expertly by Rocky <laughs> um, on early Elizabeth in England. And we have them on some other topics as well. So um, we shall 
leave it there but it's been really good there's some excellent answers in the chat window great to see um some good engagement with this today yeah really good answers and and answers throughout the tasks which shows obviously you know consistency and clearly these students have been revising yeah good, good absolutely job. well done guys okay we shall see you next week um can you remember what topic we're on it's more elizabeth um we're moving I on i think I need to double check. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's foreign threats during oh, the 1560s, yeah, sounds... like the Dutch Revolt and things like that. That sounds where we quite... get to really getting into the nitty gritty. That sounds quite likely, doesn't it? Okay, if you've enjoyed the session, please do click the thumbs up to say that you did, um, and if you uh, and also if you can subscribe, then you'll find out about our future um, future sessions. Someone's saying that their teacher is a very good teacher from Anonymous there. So that's good to hear. It's always good to praise your teacher. Okay. Um, so see you next week. Great to see you all. Cheers. Bye-bye.